John Lord is an aristocrat of the musical world. In a career ranging from classical to jazz to heavy rock and back again, he's delighted millions of fans and has become a legend in his time. John was born and grew up in Leicester. His father worked in the local hosiery industry by day, but spent his evenings on stage playing saxophone with the local fire service band. John has fond memories of his father rushing home from work for a quick tea before transforming into a brill-creamed and mustachioed stage persona off to his next performance. With music in his blood, it did not take long for John's passion for keyboard to be revealed as he tapped out notes on his grandfather's dilapidated piano. Formal piano lessons followed from a tender age, and as John's prodigious talent became obvious, he was guided by a music teacher who was to have a seminal influence on his life. He was taught not only to play, but also a full set of musical skills, including composing and orchestration that underpin so much of his later career. John attended the then Wigaston Boys Grammar School, right next to this university, though his obsession with music and burgeoning interest in drama did not facilitate great academic success. He left to work in a local office, but by then had started acting at the Little Theatre alongside his music, and rapidly decided that the office life was not for him. A chance encounter led him to apply for and be selected for a place at a London drama school, and so he moved into the scene that was to transform his life. John arrived in London at the dawn of the 1960s, when the first stirrings of the massive cultural changes to come over the next decade were already apparent. Alongside his drama, he played in jazz and rhythm and blues combos, cutting his performing teeth in the back rooms of pubs around London and in dingy rooms which he recalls always seem mysteriously to be above branches of Burton's The Tailors. This hard graft yielded little financial reward, but connected him firmly to the relatively small community that was the London Musical Village, many of whose residents went on to superstardom as the decade progressed. In 1963, John acquired his first electric organ and became part of a group called the Artwoods, formed by Arthur Wood, the brother of Ronnie Wood of Rolling Stone fame. They were not to trouble the charts unduly, but did allow John to develop his distinctive and some would say unique style with the Hammond organ that became so prominent later. By late 1966, John was ready to develop further, which he did through working as a session player, backing many famous groups of the time. Rented by the hour, he spent the infamous Summer of Love in 1967 cooped in pokey recording studios, providing the background colour to many hits of the time. By now, the 60s pop scene was reaching its zenith, and John was right in the middle of the action. He was working as a backing player to a long-forgotten manufactured one-hit wonder called the Flowerpot Men, when he was approached by a businessman keen to set up a band that would break the mould and move rock music to the next level. So began Deep Purple and a rapid ascent to rock superstardom. Characterized by the powerful counterpoint between lead guitar and John with his Hammond, Purple composed and delivered a series of now classic albums, all reaching platinum sales and toured widely around the world, playing to massive audiences. Many of their groundbreaking tracks are firmly embedded in modern culture. To this day, the Leicester Tigers rugby team runs out to the opening riff from Smoke on the Water. John loved and still loves the performance. Unfortunately, he never succumbed to the excesses of the rock's lifestyle that were so damaging to many of his contemporaries. His firm belief is that the audience expects and deserves the best performance you can give and that no amount of pharmacology is going to improve your talent. Even when playing hard rock with Deep Purple, John never lost his passion for classical music. In 1969, he composed the Concerto for Group and Orchestra, performed at the Royal Albert Hall, 
with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra to great critical and popular acclaim. In parallel with the success of Deep Purple, John also developed a distinctive solo career, much more based in his classical roots, and produced a series of successful albums, including the now classic Sarabande. In the way of rock bands and rock stars, Deep Purple broke up in 1976. John had loved the high life, but knew it was not real, and welcomed the time to review his options and develop further his musical persona. He took a less prominent role in a band White Snake until in 1984 Deep Purple reformed. Success was just as great second time round, but much more lasting. The band performs to this day, and John worked with them for a further 18 years until 2002, and when he decided to move on to yet another phase of his musical life. Profoundly affected by the death of his parents, He's found new created drive through spirituality and continues to compose and play with a series of successful albums over the past 10 years. His solo album, To Notice Such Things, dedicated to the memory of Sir John Mortimer, reached number four in the classical charts just recently. John Lord remains one of British music's most eclectic and talented instrumentalists. There is no sign of his creative talents abating, and we all look forward to much more to come. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, on the recommendation of Senate and Council, I present to you John Douglas Lord, that you may confer upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Music. I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Music and welcome you among us. Many congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's humbling to stand there and hear your life uh, praised. Uh, with such accuracy, I might say. Um, and I only have a few words uh, to add. This place where, where I'm standing now is, is uh, pretty much seminal in my life. I came to my first concert here um, at the age of, I think, six or seven years old. My parents brought me <coughs> to see the Halle Orchestra. Uh, with the saintly Sir John Barbaroli conducting. And I actually remember the program. It was cutting edge classical stuff. Uh, the William Tell Overture, uh, Greek's Piano Concerto, and the New World Symphony. Not, uh, not something that would keep the avant-garde happy, but it, it thrilled me and uh, I think possibly changed things right then and there. And this whole area, uh, is important to me. I was born two or three miles away. Uh, on the other side of the park, uh, my uh, piano teacher of many years lived a strange, troubled man, but a, a brilliant, brilliant teacher who pointed me not just at the piano, but at orchestra scores and books of history of music and so on. Um, in this same hall, uh, as a teenager, I saw Buddy Holly. Uh, which spun my head around. And I think the, the love of what Buddy Holly represented and the love of what the Halley Orchestra represented uh, has defined my musical life. I was at Wigaston Boys, that side of the park. My grandfather lived in an apartment just up the road here. Uh, this town was, and still is, deep in, inside my, uh, my bones. And uh, it's a huge, huge privilege and an honor uh, to come back here and, and accept uh, this honorary degree. I'm, I'm almost 
not quite, but almost, beyond words. My parents, were they alive, would be dancing in the street. Uh, I suspect and hope that they're dancing somewhere far more pleasant than Avril Road. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, and God bless, and good luck.